Okay, thanks, Michael, for the introduction. I'm Do Gyeong Song, a PhD student at UC Irvine. So this is a joint work with my collaborators, Julian Prabhu, Yo, Stan Per, and my advisor, Michael Franz. So this talk is going to be about tools that find vulnerabilities in C and C++ programs. Um, so this is an SOK paper, so there will be lots of material stats in the paper, but omitted from the talk. I'd like to start by looking at um, how C and C++ programs are vetted for security vulnerabilities today. There are, broadly speaking, manual analysis, static analysis, and dynamic analysis. Our paper focuses on dynamic analysis, analysis tools, often called sanitizers that find vulnerabilities in C and C++ programs. So this is a mature area. As you can see here, there is a large body of research published in the area over the last 35 years, starting from 80s when C started gaining popularity. Some of them are already um, widely adopted and behind discoveries of many software vulnerabilities. Many other tools, however, um, only exist in the literature without being adopted and deployed in practice. So by surveying and taxonomizing these tools, we shed light on why. Um, during the talk, I'll highlight some of the challenges um, that remain to be solved in designing and implementing a dynamic analysis tools for C++, I C and C++, and addressing those challenges will increase adoption and also lead to discovering more vulnerabilities that might be, might be lurking in today's software. So by looking at these tools here, however, you might wonder that um, why some of the tools that are often discussed as exploit mitigations are shown here. In our paper, we consistently view these tools as sanitizers and bug finding tools because these tools do have some of the characteristics that's desirable in detecting and finding vulnerabilities. Let me use this example flow of a control flow hijacking attack uh, to explain how exploit mitigations and sanitizations might differ and perhaps overlap. So this control flow hijacking attack starts by triggering an integer overflow, which triggers a heap buffer overflow. And the attacker uses this heap buffer overflow to overwrite a function pointer, which is later used in an indirect call. So the goal of exploit mitigations is to mitigate consequences of a vulnerability that might be present in a program. As such, it does not need to detect the vulnerabilities as they occur, um, if, especially if it comes at a cost. So in this example, um, tools enforcing certain forms of control flow integrity and code pointer integrity limit possible consequences of a possible uh, vulnerability in the program, but they do not necessarily find vulnerabilities themselves as they occur. On the other hand, tools that perform forms of uh, bound checking, such as softbound and address sanitizer, can be viewed as sanitizers because they do detect the heap buffer overflow, the vulnerability itself, as it occurs. Their differences can further be summarized as follows to, po to point out a couple more. Um, tools, um, sanitizers do have more relaxed performance budget than exploit mitigations do. So it's often more desirable to track more diagnostic information as the program executes because such information can tell you about the location of the vulnerability. Now, what makes C and C++ so special from the security standpoint? One of the things that distinguishes C and C++ from perhaps managed languages is that the presence of undefined behavior. Undefined behavior is a possible program behavior that's left undefined explicitly and deliberately by the language standard. So in fact, C and C++ leave quite many aspects of a possible program behavior undefined, which include buffer overflow, use after free, and type errors, and so on. These are all widely known security vulnerabilities. And more specifically, the security implications of undefined behavior can be classified into two. First and foremost, of course, is uh, memory safety violations, which is vulnerable to memory exploits. On the left-hand side of the slide is an example program statement, which is vulnerable to um, low pointer reference. Um, and on the right-hand side is its compilation result. No pointer reference is undefined behavior and is also a violation of uh, memory safety that's exploitable under certain circumstances. Besides memory safety violations, there is a second security implication, though, which is perhaps often overlooked. 
it is that the presence of undefined behavior in a program can surprisingly result in vulnerable code being generated by the compiler. Let me take the same example, but this time with an added null pointer check um, and some privileged code that's protected by the null pointer check. As you can see here, unfortunately, the null pointer check is placed after a possible null pointer reference in the first line. This can create a very interesting vulnerability. So what can happen here is that the compiler reasons about the value of the pointer tune here and concludes that the pointer can't be null um, when the null pointer check is performed. The reasoning here is that the pointer was already being dereferenced in the first line before, so it can't be null. Since the pointer can't be null, um, the compiler removes the null pointer check that was supposed to protect the privileged code that follows. So combined with compiler's code reordering, the result can be rather unexpectedly that the null pointer check present at the source code level becomes a privileged escalation vulnerability in the end, even though the null pointer check that was protecting the privileged code was present at the source code level. So these are vulnerabilities that the sanitizers we studied cover. Most of these can either directly or indirectly lead to memory safety violations. Besides um, direct memory safety violations, spatial and temporal memory safety violations, things like type confusion and integer overflows are also considered harmful in the absence of memory safety in C and C++. Um, in addition, some undefined behavior, um, such as using uninitialized variables, some of type errors, and null pointer reference, and others, can even today lead to vulnerable code being generated by the compiler. Uh, this is because the mainstream compilers already reason about, uh, actively reason about like, such undefined behavior. Having recognized such risk, you might have already seen that many projects actually set different compiler flags to disable certain optimization behavior. Flags that disable deletion of null pointer checks. Flags that disable um, optimization based on strict aliasing rule in C. In C. Uh, but, but bad news is that things can change as the compiler optimizations evolve. So a sanitizer implements a bug finding technique using uh, various program instrumentation and metadata management techniques. A bug finding technique describes the key mechanism uh, that a tool uses to detect a given target class of bugs. For instance, address sanitizer um, inserts so-called red zones between uh, objects in memory to find the spatial memory safety violations by checking each memory whether each memory access goes to red zone or not. Program instrumentation te technique describes how and when a tool instruments a program to monitor its runtime behavior. Address Sanitizer uses compiler-based uh, instrumentation, for example. And metadata management technique describes how a tool stores and manages various types of static and dynamic metadata um, at runtime. And Address Sanitizer, again, for example, uses a shadow memory to indicate whether a memory region is um, red zone or not. And precision and overheads are a more or less um, direct result of the implementation and design choices. And this is our analysis of 37 tools along these axes, bug finding technique, program instrumentation, uh, metadata management, as well as their performance and uh, precision characteristics. I'll not go into details about each axis and each of the tools here. Um, Please refer to our paper for more details. For the remainder of the talk, I'll instead focus on and highlight some of the challenges that remain to be solved um, in designing and implementing a, a dynamic analysis tools for C and C++. Um, as we all know, performance is not a major concern for a bug finding tool. Uh, for example, tools having 3x performance overhead are widely used in practice. So the bug detection technique, uh, bug detection precision problems uh, are the main concern and uh, challenge here. Uh, there are many false positives, even um, especially in tools that are not widely deployed, and there are many false negatives, uh, um, especially um, in widely deployed tools, they can miss 
um, many types of bugs. To elaborate further, let me describe how false positives and how false negatives can be understood and perhaps be defined. So there is the ISO standard and real world programs that are well defined by the ISO standard as you can see in the diagram. And there are also programs that are not well, well defined, which include programs that transiently construct pointers that go out of bounds of an array. However, there are many, many real world programs that transiently construct such out of bounds pointers. Um, which is reflected in what's called de facto standards. So de facto standards reflect dialects of the language that an actual corpus of real world programs follow. So sanitizer policies do not quite align with any of these standards. So red shading here it represents programs that violate a sanitizer policy. It's often too strict, generating uh, false alarms for programs that are legitimate under the ISO and de facto standards. And it's often too um, permissive, leaving many real bugs um, unsanitized. So how can we reduce these gaps? One way towards reducing these false alarms is to take into account both ISO and de facto standards. Supporting more of de facto standards is desirable because it means that a tool is applicable to a actual corpus of real world programs that are out there. And which in turn means that a tool can find actual bugs in real world programs. For example, many real world programs transiently construct out of bounds pointers. However, many tools do not actually permit this. Some of bound checking tools and dangling pointer invalidation tools, for example, can incorrectly invalidate pointers when programs construct out of bounds pointers. Let me also take a look at the other precision gap, um, namely false negatives. There are still many challenging bugs that elude existing and widely deployed sanitizers. Many subclasses of uh, memory safety violations, for example, um, such as intra-object buffer overflow, uh, elude a widely deployed sanitizer, address sanitizer. And also type error detection tools, uh, type error detection efforts are also focused mostly on bad casting detection. Uh, but there are many type punning constructs in C and C++ that programmers can use and any errors in using such type punning constructs are not detected by existing bad casting um, detection tools. In general, finding these elusive bugs requires a finer grained metadata tracking such as tracking bounds for every single pointer and tracking effective type of every single object in memory. However, it brings its own set of uh, performance and precision challenges, which to our knowledge has not been properly addressed yet. Let me describe some of the challenges. First, uninstrumented code can cause problems for pointer, pointer metadata tracking. For example, if you see on the left-hand side, fat pointer technique is incompatible with uninstrumented code, um, because if a, fat, if a fat pointer gets passed to uninstrumented code, the program can crash as the fat pointer gets dereferenced. And on the right hand side, um, maintaining uh, metadata disjoint from original pointer values can be an option, but now uh, it can create another problem. Uh, as you've as you seen on the right hand side of the slide, um, uninstrumented code can update a pointer without updating its metadata, which can cause problems um, when the outdated metadata gets used in a sanitizer check. Uh, I should also mention that full instrumentation is also an option, but it's often not viable due to things like binary only libraries. Even with full instrumentation, like for example, using dynamic binary translation, sanitizers can still fail to keep track of pointer metadata. For example, C supports pointer to integer cast. Uh, this is incompatible with fat and tagged pointers, and disjoint metadata can also be an option here, but pointer flow tracking across pointer integer cast remains to be an often problem. To our knowledge, um, no existing tools address this problem. 
Another challenge is maintaining thread safety if the original program is multi-threaded. For example, if there are two threads that are atomically updating the same pointer value concurrently, and if the corresponding metadata update is not within the same atomic unit, um, metadata can go out of sync here. One may be able to address this problem by introducing locks for every memory location that's accessed atomically, but no tool actually addresses um, this problem yet. Detecting type errors um, beyond bad casting vulnerability requires tracking effective type of all memory objects. However, the effective type rules in C are complex, mainly because C is not a strongly typed language. Um, it supports many constructs that support um, type punning, and there are standard library functions such as uh, memcopy that work, that work right on byte-level byte data representation without knowing its high-level type. So C's aliasing rules also um, make type error detection difficult. This is because a stored value can be read by using pointers of different types. For example, um, reading a stored value using a, um, a pointer of a character type is always allowed. Besides addressing uh, challenges related to bug detection precision problems, um, there are also uh, several areas that we find, um, areas for future research that we find promising. Composing sanitizers would help um, users to find bugs closer to their source and help users to use resource more efficiently. And perhaps more importantly, there's um, newly, with newly available hardware features such as address tagging and memory tagging in ARM, we may want to revisit some of the uh, precision and performance challenges um, that the software-based tool had to face. And it, it would also be interesting to see whether research in user space sanitizers extend to non-user space programs, such as OS kernels. With that, I'd like to thank you all for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Anyone with questions, please step forward to the microphone. Okay, I guess we have no questions. Um, thank you very much. Oh, we do have a question. So Mike, since you're the advisor, I'll save your question, right? I'll ask it. Um, so while you mentioned those potential future directions, uh, those are something big, right? Um, can you share some actual thoughts in terms of uh, doing this in the tech architecture or even composition? Composition is a, such a big word. Um. That's a difficult question, actually. So, so the main problem is that there are so many research tools there, but they're um, really not compatible with um, like real-world programs. That's kind of hindering adoption. So, I think um, I think there is room for research, um, especially like. Performance is not a major concern for a sanitizer. Uh, and trying to um, answer some of the precision problems by sacrificing performance, probably that might also be a possible future direction, some concrete. So, so I think I do want to add that, you know, so performance is not a concern, but if you start layering these things on top of each other, then at some point, possibly people will not want to do this anymore, right? So if you have three sanitizers, each of them gives you three X at some point, you know, where, where do people want to draw the line? I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much again. Thank you all for coming. Thanks to the speakers.